you're watching Trending Tonight with me, Sanket Upadhyay. Now remember, exit poll day is today. But we must always, always remember that these are elections that were held, almost forced on this country in the middle of a pandemic. And this is a fact that cannot be forgotten. It almost appears as if all of these things, all of these activities, whether it is the IPL or the elections, are all happening in a totally different universe, completely away from the reality that India is living as of this moment. It is in this context we are bringing you this poll of polls. We've restricted our broadcast, but let's quickly show you the numbers on the screen right now. So let's first begin with Bengal. This is, a, is an aggregate, it's a poll of polls. As you can see, the various polling agencies uh, have given their result. So there are some who are sticking their neck out in favor of, uh, of the Trinamool Congress, saying that she's gonna win by a muted margin, not, not the uh, type that we saw in 2016. There are some uh, who seem to be tilting towards the BJP. For instance, India News Janki Baat, which is giving BJP about 162 to 185. That means they will form their government. Let's take a look. Many pollsters have carried out their exit poll for West Bengal, a keenly watched contest. Uh, so on your screen right now, in just a short moment, the second slide uh, where you have Republic TV as well as NewsX, uh, who are also um, you can see Republic TV there, uh, CNX poll, uh, giving pretty much similar weightage to both, slightly tilted in favor of the BJP. There's one more poll, which is Access My India, which has also not stuck its neck out, uh, giving both the TMC and the BJP uh, figures in the range of 130 to 160. Now that's, a, that's an incredible range. One can call it an incredible range, 130 to 160 for both. Go figure. Let's quickly take a look at the next state. Tamil Nadu up next on your screen right now, where uh, most of the pollsters seem to be convinced that the DMK is now coming to power. The halfway mark is 118, majority mark is 118. And most of the pollsters say that it's the DMK Congress Alliance, which is going to easily sail through that majority mark and form the government. EPS, OPS not working. The picture in Kerala, as far as these exit polls are concerned, uh, really alarming uh, results, where some of these pollsters feel that it's the return of the LDF. In fact, if you watch closely, most of the pollsters say this is the return of the LDF, some even concluding that the UDF will be decimated. Not much to celebrate for the BJP, Metro Man perhaps, but the Congress, according to some polls, will be decimated. And Kerala is for the first time going to break this cycle of electing LDF and UDF uh, one by one. So most pollsters are now saying that Pinarai Vijayan is going to come back. Uh, some more polls that have been carried out on your screen in just a short moment, all predicting. For instance, look at India Today, Access My India. Uh, giving the LDF uh, a range of 104 to 120, which is massive. So that's uh, that's Kerala for you. Let's quickly show you numbers for Assam. In Assam, uh, the BJP has uh, an edge in most of the exit polls, where the BJP alliance seems to be comfortable as far as winning the elections, and the Congress Mahajot or the Mahagadbandhan uh, not being successful in converting their campaign into. Uh, a victory. Some of them uh, saying that it's going to be neck and neck, but then others largely concluding that this is going to be tilted in favor of the BJP. Let's get you the overall poll of polls also on your screen right now. Uh, an aggregate of all the polls that have been conducted, which will appear on the screen in just a short moment. As you can see that uh, for West Bengal, the majority mark is 148. The Trinamool Congress will get about uh, 148, which means in, in an aggregate, they will just about manage to reach the majority mark. Uh, in Tamil Nadu, uh, convincing win for the DMK at 165. In Kerala, LDF coming back with the 88. Uh, in Assam, the BJP will be back with the 72. And in Puducherry, the alliance, and this is very interesting, the NRC plus, which includes the BJP, that means uh, it's, it's the NDA. Uh, they will form the government with 20 seats. The BJP had uh, 
no base at all in Puducherry. So, this is going to be good news for them. Okay, so let us first talk about Tamil Nadu, the state which has not been spoken about much today because obviously everybody wants to talk about West Bengal. Manu Sundaram, DMK spokesperson is with us and we have Kovai Satyan, spokesperson of the ADMK. Thank you very much. Manu, uh, you are quite happy, aren't you, with the exit poll results? Well, not happy enough for a number of reasons. Uh, the, our party president has set us a target of 200 or of 234, and really that's what we were hoping for, and let us see on Sunday. And secondly, because the, the country is going through a very difficult time, and I do not think that any party, whoever it might be, who win any of the five states on Sunday will be in any mode of, of celebration or, or exuberance or happiness. We have... Uh, be before us a very, very difficult task, one of taking care and, and undoing much of the mismanagement of COVID crisis that has happened over the last uh, eight to 10 months. And we have to put this country back on the growth path. We have to take care of lost livelihoods and people who are in despair and who are in dire need of medical care and access to good health care. So Tamil Nadu, as you know, hasn't been yet affected by the crisis in, uh, yet, but you know, we are very cognizant that we will have very little time to put in place a complete and robust COVID management plan. But mm. uh, having seen 2019 and, and the outright rejection of the Narendra Modi, Palani Sami governments in 2019, though it was a Lok Sabha poll, we, we feel these results are along expected lines. We feel if anything, the two governments have failed further, the people of Tamil Nadu and uh, India at large, and that we hope that the results will ensure okay. that this is the beginning of the end of the Hindutva fascist regime. Okay. Uh, Kovai Satyan, uh, how would you respond? First of all, your opinion on the on the exit polls and then also in a reply that you may want to give, Manu. I can only give a reply based on our past experiences. Is it one way to believe that exit polls are sacroscant and uh, that will hold true and good? Then DMK will be the only party ruling the state for the last 30 years since 1990. So our personal experiences, we have seen many such pre-poll and post-poll surveys wherein there was a prediction for DMK which never turned out to be true. Even the last election of 2016 stands as a testimony for the same. So I don't want to go gaga over saying that, no, no, your hypothesis is wrong, this is wrong, that is wrong. Yes, it's your duty. You people are in the race. Every channel is in the race of the poll predictions, post-poll surveys, and you are no exception to the same. So we have to wait and watch. The results will be anyway going to be out by Sunday. Sunday, by this time, yes, AADMK would have created history by forming the government for the third consecutive time. The okay. mandate would have been clear. So we are pretty much confident. But what do you it. think is going to work in your favor? Yes, when, when people said that uh, this government is going to fall, when my opposition leader said it's going to be a week, it's going to be two weeks or three weeks, uh, just a stroke of my finger, this government is going to fall, he couldn't do it. Uh, so, yes. Uh, tougher times doesn't last, tough people do. Edapadi Pani Sami sure. filled the vacuum of the uh, leadership uh, in Tamil Nadu and he proved to be the strongest middle as far as the leadership okay. is of Tamil Nadu is concerned. Sure. And we went all out talking about the achievements of our government and governance rather than trying to create fake Well, I can only like say whoever opposition. forms the government has his task cut out because uh, we cannot forget, though, though, uh, the country did get into this election mode and Madras High Court of all courts said that the second surge, uh, it, it's these elections that is responsible for the second surge. In most poll bound states, we have seen that there has been a direct relation between elections as well as the surge. So the task very clearly is to make sure that uh, we don't suffer much more than we are already suffering right now. Mr. Sundaram, as well as uh, uh, Mr. Sunam, and as well as Mr. Kovai Satyan, thank you very much for joining us. Let's now shift to uh, West Bengal and talk about what is happening in West Bengal. Again, there is a surge in this state, which is directly proportional to the number of phases of elections that were held. Uh, but the West Bengal numbers on your screen right now, the aggregate gives the TMC uh, 152, uh, the left at 12. What, uh, what a terrible dip for the left. The BJP up to 130, a gain of 127, which is massive. However, some of the pollsters are hedging their bets. Shogat Roy, uh, he is the Lok Sabha MP of the Trinamool Congress, is now with us. Shama Mohammed, spokesperson of the Congress Party. Chandra Bose, leader of the BJP, as well as Saira Shah Halim, 
our political analyst. Thank you very much to all of you for joining us. We'll begin with you, Mr. Roy. Uh, I want to ask you, how do you look at these, how do you analyze these exit poll numbers? I mean, I mean the one poll where uh, most of the people thought that this is going to be the decider, they never go wrong, they've got a great, uh, you know, Six Sigma-like record, uh, even they are hedging their bets. No, I'm not happy with the numbers given by these exit polls. I think that TMC will get more seats and the BJP will get less seats. But at least, even if somebody believes the exit polls or the poll of polls, arrogant Amit Shah's prediction that Aglebar Tosopar will not be fulfilled. I still think that BJP will be struggling to reach a hundred seats. Ultimately, what happened in West Bengal is that BJP brought its top guns into Bengal. Modi made, Modi made numerous trips to the state and more than 20 public meetings. And Amit Shah almost made West Bengal his home. I don't want to speak of Naddas and Chaddas. I have never seen in my life, political life of 60 years, so much money being spent on a state assembly election. Hmm. As things look, we have been able to defeat hmm. all the show of power and all the show of money. We have hmm. also been able to defeat the election commission under Sunil Arora, which played a very partisan role hmm. in having eight phase election, which uh, sure was and and that too COVID in COVID to times. I think more state. than anything else, I, I think we were not fair in this election process on the people, people of the country, to have such a yes. long election. Have suffered. Okay, yes, Chandra, very, Chandra Bose. We suffered just to satisfy the BJP. Okay, Mr. Chandra Bose, would you like to respond? See, you cannot shy away. Some of these polls are making you win or showing you as this this formidable challenger. But the point is, in reality, and I've been reading a lot of your tweets, and I must say that this is a, a pretty pragmatic view that you are presenting. That uh, the holding of elections at a time like this w was pretty much a criminal act. Do you think that your party shares a major portion of that blame? Uh, good evening, everyone. They should. Uh, you see, the Bengal elections, uh, when we started campaign, it was basically being fought on development, a change, a political change for the better, and to bring back some semblance of law and order in the state. But unfortunately, halfway through the elections, we had this terrible disease, COVID, which uh, literally, uh, you know, kind of attacked the people of the state and the election campaigning. I must admit that all political parties, the leadership and the candidates, should have exercised caution, should have taken the COVID norms seriously. Unfortunately, I think we failed as a political fraternity to maintain the COVID norms. However, now coming to the exit polls, certainly it's a very tough fight. Mamata Banerjee and the Trinamool Congress uh, are a very serious contender. Mm. But I think the edge, we have an edge. The Bharatiya Janata Party has an edge simply because I think people want a double engine government in West Bengal. They want a friendly central government and the same party. No, why? The what, what's preventing? In what's preventing Narendra Modi from being friends with uh, with Mamata Banerjee, at least on no, issues it, of of a federal structure? Certainly, as far as federal structure is concerned. But I think the cooperation has to be from both sides. Okay. From either side. The Trinamool Congress, I think, has failed to really cooperate. I think whatever engine, whatever engine, Sarkar comes at least 
at least it should function no it should be able to provide Certainly. relief to people particularly in these difficult times to hold elections in the first place to force elections in the second and then uh, to insist that this continues i i don't i well, what sort see, of people are we serving the, see holding election it's the prerogative of the election commission but your party uh, mr bose went to the election commission to say that all phases must go on this should not be clubbed well see the decision was taken by the election commission because they thought that violence would erupt and violence did erupt but if we would have compressed the elections probably there would have been more violence it would have been extremely difficult okay. to control the situation now coming to the vote bank you see the critical vote bank in bengal is 4% so this 4% swing would decide who is going to be victorious and mm. i feel this 4% critical vote bank would swing in favor of the bharatiya janata party because we have a lot to offer Okay. they have seen the 10 year rule of the trinamool congress trinamool congress has also delivered it's not that they have done nothing but they How feel that bjp no no certainly <laughs> you see uh, you must appreciate your opponents as well hmm. your opponent doesn't mean that they are a complete failure they hmm. have delivered but they feel that bjp would okay. be able to deliver sure, a lot sure sure roy i'm going to come back to you let me quickly uh, get in a comment uh, from uh, our other two panelists first we'll begin with shama mohammad shama your assessment your assessment overall of these exit poll numbers you can go state by state where do you see your party because obviously as far as the uh, as far as kerala is concerned the exit pollsters are not nice to the udf as far as assam is concerned they are not uh, particularly in favor of uh, the congress party how do you look at these numbers First and foremost, Sanket, thank you so much. I've been on a couple of shows today, and you're the only anchor who has come and said, you know, this is during a pandemic. That's more important. I want to thank you on speaking on this. Now, before I get into all this, I need to bring to attention that why hasn't the health minister resigned and booked for culpable homicide? Now, three health ministers died in jail. In Jordan, when the oxygen was not available, six people died. The health minister resigned over there. Now, you, this, um, the BJP spokesperson, Mr. Bose, said that it is the election commission who has to be blamed. No, I don't agree with him fully. Yes, part of the blame is election commission. But last year, when the National Disaster Management Act was on, they invoked the BJP government at the centre, Section 35. Section 35. Once they invoked it, the Home Ministry formed six inter-ministerial teams, which went, to, which were supposed to go to different states and find out whether COVID protocols were taken, were followed, as well as new health infrastructures have been created. This was the function of them. Now, my question to Mr. Bose is that when they went and uh, they saw that, you know. one of the most important covid pro protocol for this interministerial group was whether social distancing norms were followed now they could easily see that social distancing norms were not followed only four people could be together something like this the home ministry could call the election commission mr shah and say you know what we cannot continue with this sort of uh, gatherings because as the cases have gone up we need to do virtual rallies this cannot go on did the home minister do that no and in all of the home minister's campaigns i never saw him wearing a mouth mask never himanta biswas sarma one of their most important persons in the north he says you don't need to wear mouth mask because the salons are not making money i mean these are senior the uttarakhand cm says you go into the ganga and you take a dip and you will not get covid when the kumbh was happening so uh, uh, today the most important question is why hasn't the health minister resigned why hasn't he booked been booked for culpable homicide why is amit shah still there why didn't if the section 35 was invoked under the dashwood disaster management act why didn't why could elections not have been postponed election? simple question why could these elections i mean what what would have happened see saira no, shah alim virtual virtual rallies is my question yes, why did saira shah alim no more importantly why elections why, why elections in this time there? why is the uh, health minister i like there? to ask Sa saira shah alim yeah. do you think that unfortunately we have uh, we have redefined democracy see elections are a means uh, to reach an end not the end itself absolutely see sanket four states had written to the election commission to defer the elections in 2020 we know that uh, by elections was deferred uh, the uh, rajya sabha there were a lot of uh, by elections that was deferred so why this uh, exception this year 
I mean, what was his urgency that to have the election in eight phases? If you look at the entire statistics, three candidates who were contesting for uh, West Bengal Assembly elections have died campaigning. This is Correct. unprecedented. Correct. Two candidates from the Sanjukta Morcha, one <laughs> candidate from Trin Trinamool uh, Congress, three of them have died of COVID in this entire, uh, entire campaigning process. And it is really, really, truly tragic. I think uh, the Bharatiya Janta Party has a lot to answer for because it was simply bloodlust that they ensured that the election happens in, an, in, in eight phases. No other state in India has held election in eight phases. Now, coming back to the opinion polls, to the exit polls, I think the results should match the public perception. Here, the public, public perception is clearly anti-BJP, anti-Modi. There are hashtags on Twitter that is trending, resign Modi, resign Amit Shah resign Yogi. Now, here the exit polls are showing something as the exit polls are showing that BGP has an edge. I mean, I don't believe it. I think there is something clearly amiss. And uh, hopefully the 2nd of May will show light to sure. what exactly is uh, truly, uh, you know, happening in okay, India. Okay, Mr. Bose, I want to quickly come back to you. Saira made a very interesting point. She said that nothing else can explain the BJP insisting on a uh, the longest election, state assembly election in West Bengal, but bloodlust. This madness to hold elections, this madness to grab power, was that behind the BJP's response that these elections must go on? Could you not have proposed that this, this get postponed till we put the pandemic behind us? Or at least this wave behind us? See, after the completion of the term of a state government, it is the statutory requirement to hold elections. And this decision, the onus lies with the election commission. Now, as far as the eighth phase that we are talking about, I think it is a bit unfair to put the entire blame on the Bharatiya Janata Party. See, the Bharatiya Janata Party wanted eight phase elections because the election commission suggested that if you have less than eight phase, it would be extremely difficult to contain the violence which we have seen if you, if you go Bose, back into history. When all parties propose that elections, elections must be clubbed in the remainder of the phases, it was only and only the BJP which said that let's accord the same amount of time and space in, in all fairness. What candidates have achieved in earlier phases, the same rule must be applicable to the uh, candidates in the remainder of the phases also. This is not the election commission. Every other party wanted the phases yes. to be clubbed. No, yeah. Yes, okay. But the, but the logistics uh, could not be uh, permitted. You see, the election commission clearly said that no, I if don't you think club so, the no. three phases, you, you, don't, you, know, you wouldn't have the central forces. There wouldn't be sufficient central forces to really conduct... Yes. This was a point. Mr. Bose, there are 234 uh, seats in Tamil Nadu and I think 293 in uh, West Bengal. Now, look at that. Tamil Nadu in one phase, even if there is an issue of law and order, why not in three phases? Why this eight phases? It's because the Bhatia Janta Party wanted. As the government who is in charge right now in center and who, is in, who has invoked the National Disaster Management Act, whose responsibility is you know let me tell you mr bose you have blood on your hands you have blood on your hands of indians who are dying today you know 28 years old nine year old two year old right. 35 year old mothers fathers let me tell you mr modi and mr amit shah has to answer especially mr amit shah who has invoked who has put in section 35 i want to know why did he as the home minister not ask the election commission to to you know, not allow this because of COVID protocols where the, uh, 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 the distancing is not, social distancing is not maintained. Amit Shah could easily have done. And I think what will be absolutely hand? tragic is I'm if, 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 if a hand. decision, what will be absolutely tragic is if a decision is taken post the 2nd of May. Because that and is going to expose the central government no, no. completely. Uh, Sanket, why there is no accountability from the Bharatiya Janta Party? Have you seen this government? Nobody resigns. I want to know who is accountable. Okay. Why hasn't the health minister resigned? Why hasn't the home minister resigned? Where is accountability? So
sure. Do you think you can just keep on going like this okay. without anybody being accountable? I've, I've run out of time. But thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. The point is, uh, very, very sadly, though, we you have to carry on a program on the exit poll and also on the 2nd of May when these results will be announced. See, this is also part of, elections are a part of democracy. The fact that our agencies, institutions and parties went into this exercise at a time like this, we'll have to sadly report on it because this too is news. This has to be reported. But we will constantly put the focus back by saying that do not forget we have had to pay a huge price, huge price for this exercise. It's not me saying it, it's the Madras High Court. Good night and goodbye.